praises roar in the house of God today. Lord, we worship you. Come on, church. Lord, we worship you. We love and adore you, God. We magnify your name. Have your way today. Can, it, can, can I hear a hearty amen in the house of the amen. Lord? <laughs> amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. Just give them a high five today. Let them know. Say, I'm so glad you're in the Lord's house. Amen.
higher than the mountains that I face. Stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. One day remains. One runs down your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me oh your love never fails never gives up never runs out on me your love your love on and on on and on and on and on it goes It overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid One day remains One Never gives up, never runs out on me. Oh, your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Yes, your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love, oh, your love, your love. In death, in life. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My death is pain, there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Sing that again, in death, in death, in life. I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My death is pain. There's nothing I can separate my heart from your great love. And your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out of your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Thank you, Lord, your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love, your love, your love. In death, in death, in life. I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My death is pain. There's nothing I can separate my heart from your great love. In death, in death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the of your great love My death is pain There's nothing I can separate my heart From your great love Your love, your love never fails Never gives up, never runs out Oh, your love never fails It never gives up, never runs out Never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love, your love, your love, your love, your love, your love.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise this morning. Amen. As Pastor Keith's coming back, can we just take a moment just to say thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love. We praise you. We honor you, King of Kings and Lord Hallelujah. of Lords. Amen. Amen. While you're standing for just a moment, I want to lift up some very special prayer requests today. Um, we miss some of the people from our congregation. Daryl Hart um, has uh, tested positive for COVID, and so he's isolating. But let's pray also for Karen, his wife, and his daughter, Cindy, that they would stay safe. Uh, there's a little bit of concern there, and we want to just pray for them. Amen. Uh, it, we miss Daryl. He works so hard around here on the project. He's one of the chief people with the reconstruction going on and the renovation. So be praying for Daryl. And uh, also, Carissa Armenia. Many of you know that Carissa has had a long battle with illness, and doctors are confounded by it, and they don't know what's going on. Again, this is the second time this has happened. They just sent her home from the hospital saying we can't do anything. We don't know what's going on. But we serve the great physician, and he knows exactly what's going on. So we're praying for Carissa this morning. And then also, our entire Arizona ministry network is just simply grieving so very much uh, this weekend. On Wednesday night, dear friends had a tragedy. Jonathan and Monica Gannon uh, pastored here in our section at Life Spring Church in El Mirage uh, for several years. And then most recently, he became the president uh, of SAGU AIC. And uh, on Wednesday night, Jonathan and Monica's three youngest daughters were in a car crash. It's the one you saw on the news at El Mirage Road. A pickup truck crossed the medium going the wrong way in a head-on collision. It was just horrible. Um, Sadly, their youngest daughter um, passed away, and we're praying uh, for, her name was Ariana. We, we miss Ariana, just a precious 11-year-old, beautiful young lady, and she's with the Lord today. Um, but there's unspeakable pain that goes along with that. Everybody's okay, but it's so different, and it's hurting very much right now. So I want us to lift up Dr. Gannon and his wife, Jonathan and Monica, and, and they have uh, several children. The other two girls, one walked away from the crash, one had to stay in the hospital overnight, has pretty serious injuries, but she's going to be okay and needs uh, prayers for her recovery. Can you just put yourself in their shoes this morning? How much would that hurt? I want us to pray right now for these requests. Would you join me, Vescent family? Let's lift up our voices together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for these ones. We lift up Carissa. We speak your healing. She needs a divine touch and a miracle of healing. We're thankful that when doctors are confused, you're not confused. You're the great physician. You made us. You spoke us into existence. You understand how we work. You know everything about us. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we speak your healing for Carissa. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Comfort Daniel and Marcia and Brianna. Just be with this family, Lord. And Father, I, I also just want to lift up Daryl Hart. And I pray for continued protection for Karen and, and for Cindy. We miss them today. We thank you for complete healing for his body. Don't let this be a bad case. Just let it be moderate and let it go away in Jesus' name. And Father, today we especially lift up the Gannon family. Lord, hold them up. Be their comfort. Oh, Lord, I can't even imagine how, how much it hurts, uh, the depth of loss, the grieving. And yet, your word tells us that we do not grieve like the rest of the world who has no hope. Our grieving is a hope-filled grieving that we will see her again and that there will come some good out of all of this. And we just pray your comfort, your restoration, and your healing for the family. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Lord bless you. You can be seated. I want to just uh, mention 
um, first off, uh, just so you know, um, we ran out of paper in the church office. The normal bulletins that you usually get, the one that you got today looks a little different. And it meant that we had to, at the last minute, just copy and paste and throw things on there. Um, there's one announcement that is old. The top left should have been another announcement about school supplies. And Josh, would you mind put that next slide up there about school supplies? And I want you to look at this and maybe even just take a picture of it. But don't forget, um, this is really important. I wish it was in your bulletin to take it home with you. But you might just want to take a picture of it so you remember. And there's also um, the shopping list is out in the lobby. But remember that two weeks from today, we're giving away backpacks to every student. The students must be in attendance at the service. And um, we are going to bless you with a new backpack, with all the school supplies. And we need you to continue bringing all of your stuff. You've been doing so good, but let's keep filling that bin up out in the lobby. And uh, just one thing I wanted to mention, if you didn't know it, you can go to smile.amazon.com. How many of you ever bought anything on Amazon? Let me see your hand. Okay. All right. All of you. If you go to smile.amazon.com and you say that you want to support Vescent Church, it'll let you choose that. It's the same exact shopping experience. It doesn't look different at all from Amazon. But the only difference is when you pay the same price for your product, after that, Amazon turns around and gives a kickback to the church. And so you can do that not just on this fundraising event, but every time you buy something from Amazon. I wish you would do that because it will help our church and, and uh, all of it will really add up. But thank you, Josh, for that. If we didn't get the chance to meet, if you're here and if you're not part of Urban Outreach Team, if you're here as a guest today, we just want to say welcome to you. And here's a little bit about our church. We're a church that is on point and on purpose. We have a vision and a strategy to reach our city. One example of that happened this last Monday night. It was an amazing outreach event as we gave over 1,500 bottles of water to participants at the Verado Fireworks Show. Uh, we were the only booth there, and we had an amazing night as we invited hundreds and hundreds of people. There were 5,000 people there. Most of them got a one-on-one -on -one personal invitation to come to the Verado campus. Already out of that, we've already seen fruit. People are saying, oh, that's just what I've been looking for. I've been hearing about you guys. And I'm, I'm excited that today uh, Stephanie's over leading worship at the Verado campus, and I miss her, and I'm pinch hitting for her. But I'm thrilled for, for the team there. It's amazing what God is doing. We got uh, Pastor Oliver's over there in Grace, of course, and uh, this morning TJ and Marlissa and all of, all of the gang, uh, Daniel and Marcia, we miss those guys so much. But you know what? We're seeding our city with God's presence, and so we just keep praying that it will be blessed. If you would like to connect with us, here's a way you can do that. On the screen right now, there's a phone number that you can text the word CONNECT to, and when you text CONNECT to 602-833-0075, immediately we'll start sending you correspondence. We promise not to just bombard you, but over the next several weeks for sure, we want you to know everything that's happening at the life of the church, and we welcome you. Can we give a warm welcome to our guests this morning? God bless you so much. <laughs> just a, a couple of other things real quick before we get back into some worship. Um, Go back in the ladies' restroom and see all of the ceiling tile work that was done. You might think at this stage, oh, I don't see any difference. Man, all week long uh, work was being done in that restroom, and it looks beautiful. Uh, we're very close to finishing out. The next thing will be the partitions coming in, uh, toilets and sinks being installed, and so we're getting on the home stretch. And all the ladies are excited, but especially the men are excited, right? Because we used to complain about our old smelly bathroom, but we wish we had it after these porta potties for all these months, right? So, um, but in, in all seriousness, it's going to be beautiful. And be sure to go back and check out the work week by week as it's happening. 
And then um, don't forget that in August, and I believe the date is August 19th, you've got it in your notes there, but we're going to the D-backs game. And it's, uh, we're going to have a blast just being a, a church family together with Christians from all over the state of Arizona. It's faith and family night at the D-backs game. It's a Friday night in August. Um, we got a limited number of tickets. Buy them on the website. They're 20 bucks each. And, and when you pay for it, that reserves your spot. And they're just first come, first serve. And I hope a lot of you will take advantage of that. And then this last one, next Sunday, lunch is taken care of. Okay. Next Sunday, we have our kids fundraiser meal for kids camp. It's barbecue, y'all. Right. Barbecue, potato salad, beans, comes with a bun, you get a cookie. And oh, if you want to order to go, you can do that. We got you covered. Our team, I'm so proud of them. It's going to be an awesome meal. It costs $12 per meal. It's the best deal in town. But more importantly than the great food you get, you are investing in changing kids' lives forever because next week they're going to kids' camp. Some are going to get called into ministry. Some are going to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Some might get saved. It's going to be an awesome, awesome week. And thank you for supporting that. So God bless you guys. Let me just mention our tithes and offerings. We have black boxes back there in the back of the room that you can give into. Or if you'd like to give online, you're welcome to do that as well. We'll be receiving a special love offering later in the service for our guests. And I'll be introducing them to you. And uh, we're, we've got a great, great team here today. Hey, stand to your feet, would you? Lord bless you. We're going to continue to worship. And we just enjoy the Lord's presence here in this place this morning. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, he said, come unto me, all who are weary, heavy laden. And he said, I will give you rest. And uh, this next song is a song the Lord gave me. Um, it's, it's a brand new song, but it just encourages his people to come to the Lord. I just want to encourage you today to just come to the Lord and just rest in his presence today. This is my desire. 
fill you with my holy fire. Welcome into the holy of holies. Come on in, take a seat. I have set a place for you. Sing it out, welcome, welcome into the holy of hope. Come on in, take a seat. I have set a place for you. I have torn the bed just to be with you. I have torn the bed.
Just for a moment, just just rest, just bask in his presence. Scripture says that in his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures evermore. He invites you today to come, come. Just rest in me, the Lord says. Oh, we rest in you. Mm -hmm. Breathe on your people today, Lord. Breathe on your people. I've torn the veil in two just to be with you. Let my people come. Mm -hmm. He's torn the veil in two just to be with you. Let my people come. My heart is uh, reminded of what the scripture says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land my heart is burdened for America these last couple of weeks Lord we just humble ourselves right now we can't even begin to say that we can make it without you. But with you and through you, your word declares that all things are possible with you, God. So we humble ourselves before you. And we cry out, Lord, and we seek your face, Lord. And we pray, Lord. And we seek your face. And, Lord, we turn from our wicked ways. God, forgive us, Lord, for where we failed you, for the 
for the times we've missed the mark, God. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, will you heal our land? Fractured, broken, wounded, in need of healing. Will you heal our land? Lord, thank you for our heritage. Thank you, Lord, for the revivals that we hear about, the great revivals on Azusa Street and the Great Awakening and other revivals. Thank you for that, Lord. But I'm asking, Lord, right here, right now, will you send revival to our land? Let it start with me, God. Let it start in me, Lord. Let me have a heart that chases after you, God. God, help me, Lord. I want to chase after you, Lord, to run after you, Lord, with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my strength, Lord, with all of my mind, God. Oh, God. Sin revival. Sin revival. Sing it. See, I have torn the veil in two just to be with you. I have torn, I have torn the veil in two just to be with you. I have torn, I have torn. This is my desire. lift up a praise all over this place. Lord, we worship you. We magnify your name. Lord, we come to you today. You have said in your word, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. Lord, we come close to you today. Thank you for holding us today, God. 
We worship you. We magnify your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me. Sing that again. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed. By you, how you love me. You dance over me, sing that this morning. You dance over me. While I am on the way, you see all around. But I never hear a sound. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Now you love me. One more time. serving the Lord for some time now, but can I tell you, each and every day, I'm amazed by His mercy, His love. You know, the scripture tells us that He meets us with new mercy every morning, steadfast love. It says the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, great is thy faithfulness. We just stretch our hands toward heaven. Lord, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you.
by your great love for us. Words cannot express how much we love you, Lord. We thank you. We're not going to sing it this morning, but I'm reminded of that old song that just said, oh, for a thousand tongues to give you praise. If I had a thousand tongues, I could not praise you enough, Lord. If you... If you don't do anything else for me, Lord, it's all good because you've already done more than enough. I say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's hard to move on from times like these, ain't it? (laughs) I just want to sit in His presence and just... Just bask in his presence. Mm. I love you, Lord. Mm. 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 The Lord just wants to remind someone today there's room for you at the cross. He says, quit fighting it. Quit wrestling with me and just come. And I will take your hurt. I will take your pain. And I will remove it from you. As far as the east is from the west. Nothing is too hard for me, says the Lord. There's no distance that I can't go. I will meet you right where you are. But I ask you today, just come. Come. Right there where you're standing. Right there where you're seated. Would you just whisper the name Jesus? Jesus, I come to you. I bring my burden. I bring my luggage. I bring everything that's weighing me down. And I sit it at your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for taking my burden away from me. Thank you, Lord, that there's victory in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that there is freedom in your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there is liberty in your name. We praise you, Lord. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Before you're seated today, would you, would you go and shake someone's hand? Give someone a hug. Let them know that you are glad they are in God's house today. God bless you today.
Hey, if I could have a, a couple of gentlemen. Brother Carlos, would you come and help with, with this? And I'm trying to remember my brother's name right here. Ricky, can you? Uh, well, I think we got it. We got the muscle man on it. Never mind, Ricky. <laughs> That's right. So thank you, Carlos. Um, hey, uh, I was reminded. By the way, before we move forward, I just got to say that was so incredible. You just never know when God's presence is going to saturate the room, right? And wasn't it amazing just to be in God's presence and just enjoy loving him and, and being with God's people and loving one another? In the first year that I was the pastor here at the church, we had planned um, a big potluck dinner after Sunday service. All the people cooked and made made wonderful wonderful food. We had crock pots. We had we had plenty of carbs, right? You know how potlucks go. We had plenty of carbs, and and everybody was uh, getting ready for the meal. But I got up to preach that morning, and uh, God totally changed what I had planned to say, and He told me. As I was stepping up to the podium, um, you didn't send out the, the invitations. And I opened the scripture that morning and I read about the banquet has been prepared. Go out into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. That's right. And so I said, you know what? This morning we're not going to have preaching. We're going to go out and invite people to come for a meal. I want you to go find homeless people and let's bring them into God's house and feed them today. And so I think that morning we had three that we found. The whole church just went, I mean, they're hitting Circle K and they're going to stores and just looking around. And we brought three people in and gave them a, a meal that day and it felt so amazing and so wonderful. And I felt way back then that this is always something that's going to be very dear to our hearts, to minister to God's people, to minister to the ones who are in need. I want to tell you, God has raised up a ministry in Arizona that does precisely that. Urban outreach is incredible. It ministers to people where they are, homeless, prostitutes, drug addicts, and businessmen, businesswomen, it doesn't matter, whatever the need. They're continually reaching out and witnessing to people and sharing the love of God. I love uh, Nathaniel, but I call him Zippy. Yeah, and um, uh, Zippy and, and Liz Dirks are a blessing to the Arizona Ministry Network, and they lead urban outreach ministries. And some of you are not strangers with him. If you've never heard him, you better buckle up your seatbelt and hold on. That's all I can say. <laughs> I'm thrilled to have my friend come. Would you give a warm welcome to Pastor Zippy Dirks as he comes to bring the message this morning and uh, shares what God's put on his heart. God bless you, brother. Welcome. y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Y'all hear me clear? What about now? Can y'all hear me loud and clear? Praise the Lord. I love, where'd he go? Where? Oh, he took, oh, there's a side door. Look. You just Houdini'd me, Pastor. Look. I don't even know there's a door back there. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Pastor Keith. I love him. I uh, I actually met him at the at district, Amen. you know, and, and uh, J Jim Turner, Jim and Leith were out here before us and got our foot in the doors as U.S. missionaries. And he says, "All right, we're gonna be at district. When we get to district, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you all the pastors that that, that I know." I said, "Awesome." Well, Pastor Keith was walking up with his brother, uh, Pastor Jamie, who's in Dallas, right? And <laughs> he goes, "You got to meet him. You're gonna love him." I said, awesome, what's his name? He goes, it's Pastor Keith. Well, I forgot his name on the way to walk up to him. <laughs> but uh, I was so tickled, and ever since I met him, 
I was like, man, I love him. And he's complete opposite of me. But we got the same thing in common. Amen. We got the same thing in common. We love the Lord. It's all about the kingdom. It's about Jesus. And the last time I was here, last July, it was actually July 11th last year is when I was here, I believe it was. And I had a guy with me. His name's Eugene Moore. And I said, Eugene, this is going to be you once you get ordained. And I said, this is Pastor Keith. This is exactly who you are, but he's older and a little more mature in the faith. I mean, their personalities are identical. Anybody ever seen somebody who had the same personality? They talk in the same tone. They present the, uh, the gospel the same way. Well, that was Eugene and uh, Pastor Keith. And Eugene just finished all of his classes for his licensing. So that is a huge accomplishment. So I, I absolutely love him. Come on now. Give the Lord a praise. Now here's the other ironic thing about Eugene. Eugene didn't talk. All right. Anybody that knows Eugene knows that Eugene Moore did not talk. The best thing you was getting out of him was a head nod and, and a small wave. And not even a, hey, how are you? Hey, Eugene, you doing all right? You didn't get one of these. You didn't get one of these. You got this. And that was about as best as you was getting from him. Now, Eugene, he's preaching the word of God. He's our outreach director. He's leading people to Jesus. He's casting out devils. He's raising up other leaders. And he's about to get licensed with the Assemblies of God as a missionary and go for his full appointment. That was in one year time. Can you imagine what God's going to do with him in seven years? Or in two years, or three years, or four, or five, or six, or seven. Don't tell me God ain't real. No one ever convinced me God ain't real. God blessed me with a wife that is beyond any kind of comprehension that any kind of man could comprehend that God would bless me with a one. Raise your hand, honey. Come on, raise your hand. Come on. I share this everywhere I go because it's, it's real. My wife is out of my league. Anybody else's wife's out of their league? Come on. God has blessed me tremendously. I can't work on car. I'm, me I'm mechanically, I'm constructionally declined. All right? I'm as far away. Like, you get a hammer. We, we, we were at a City Church Phoenix one night, and we were nailing things to the cross. And uh, as soon as I said, you got to get a hammer and nail, everybody just slowly looked at me. I said, man. I said, look, Pastor Bob, like, all you have to do is put the nail on the wood and hit it like four times, Zippy. It took me like ten tries. I'm telling you, God just did not bless me with the ability to swing a hammer, or, but I can labor. I can pick up heavy stuff, all right? Played sports my whole life. And, but God's blessed me with so many people around me. I got Brother James here. Come on. James is being raised up. He just started his classes. Come on. So he can get credentialed. He's about to start leading our outreach teams on his own. Yeah. Why? Because we love God. We love people. We serve people. And we make disciples. It's not about us. It's never going to be about us. It's about the kingdom. And then I'm sure many people in here know Carrie. Yeah. Come on. I love Carrie. Carrie and Mitchell are amazing. And they're... Uh, Absolute blessing to not only do the ministry, but our family. Amen. It's my wife's best friend. My kids are crazy about Carrie. And they like her more than me. <laughs> they like Mitchell more than me. So when Carrie comes around, I'm like, all right, Liz, we got the next couple hours off. <laughs> Get away. So Carrie's grown light years. And it's been amazing just to be able to experience. And Carrie started her classes. So she got enrolled in her classes. Why? Because... It's about getting people to the next level. Now, how many people know, <laughs> how many people know when you begin to step into the call and step into what God's called you to, things can get a little bit on the messy side. Amen. Amen. Anybody know that? Come on, raise your hand. Look, we're going to get active today. All right. I, I, I like to engage. We got to be active. All right. We have a lukewarm churches all across America because people stop being active. We ain't going to be lukewarm, amen? amen? He talks about the different churches and revelations. We ain't going to be that one. Amen? amen. <laughs> so, such a blessing to be part of. And now we have total seven people. 
My wife is working on her credentials. Come on. She's, she just uh, got two more classes signed up for last night. I, I just, I, I don't get how God works like that. I, last time I was here, I, I, I got my classes done. I got licensed. Well, then something else happened. I ended up getting fully appointed in under two years. So now we're officially fully appointed U.S. missionaries, which doing that under two years, I don't want this thing to fly off me, is kind of unheard of. But when you step into what God's called you to, God does the miracles. God does the signs. God shows the wonders. So don't ever doubt God. Because I promise you this, God will make a miracle out of you. He will use the least parts of your life and turn you in to confusion for the enemy. Does anybody know that? Amen. I was never supposed to be up here from man's perspective. I was never supposed to be blessed with five children from man's perspective. That's my oldest. My oldest did something this last Thursday on outreach. I promise we're going to get into the word. <laughs> promise. But I, I'm so excited for what God is doing. I really am. I, I can't quit talking about I can't quit bragging about my God. Brother Al, good to see you. My oldest, Anna, raise your hand. She gets embarrassed. Come on, not a Eugene hand. Raise your hand. There she is. She is so shy. But she did one of the biggest acts of humility I've ever seen out of an 11-year-old. We're out there. We're ministering. You know, Eugene had a team downtown. We was letting James lead a team in Glendale. We get out of the stop. And she goes, Mom, can I give that lady my new shoes? This is coming from an 11-year-old. From an 11-year-old. I want to bless her with my new shoes. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, baby girl, I know you got big feet, but <laughs> talking about adults here. And th this is going on in my head. Sure enough, she pops up. Yeah, these are my size. I'm like, praise the Lord. That woman got a brand new pair of shoes from an 11-year-old. She goes, it's okay. I got flip-flops. She took flip-flops over the better choice. Why? Because there was a need and she filled it. My kids, when they see the homeless people on the corners, when we're getting off the highways, they get upset if we don't have hope for homeless bags. If we don't have something to give to someone in need, they get upset at us. Like, how many people can say kids get upset for not having enough for others? It's not that me and my wife are the greatest parents on earth. No, but this is how we're raising our kids up. This is how we all should raise our kids up. Guess what? You don't have to be homeless. You don't have to be a drug addict. You don't have to be a drug lord, a pimp, a prostitute. I promise you that I'm about to ask you all this question. And anybody that don't raise your hand, I'll put you on blast. I'm not afraid to. <laughs> Amen. Everyone has a need in some area of their life. How many people in here have a need? Come on. If there is a need, God can fill that need. We have watched people get set free from things that nobody else say, good luck. I said, praise the Lord. I'm glad they're with Urban Outreach. And since, since December, since December, we have quadrupled in size. We went from 20. We actually had 86 people two weeks ago. 86. It ain't about the numbers. But there was 86 servants. See, a lot of people, they'll pray for leaders. I say, God, send me servants. As soon as you find a servant, you found a leader. It's just allowing them to see and access that key to unlock the doors for the kingdom. See, nobody would ever say James was a servant unless they knew the kingdom. They wouldn't say Carrie was a servant until they unlocked the kingdom. Eugene was a servant, kingdom. They're, that's just a couple. And it's not that we're doing nothing special. Like, what are you doing, Zippy? Loving God, loving people, serving people, making disciples. Because it's not about us. It's never going to be about us. We just want the heart of God. When brother was up here praying, I was like, man, yes. Yes. Have a heart for God. I want to go after God's heart like David went after God's heart. When I come into the house of the Lord, I want, I want to see everybody glad. It's one of my favorite scriptures now, Psalms 122.1. For I was glad when they said, let's go be in the house of the Lord. 
I was glad. It didn't say I was struggling. I was this. No, it says I was glad to be in the house of the Lord. And David screwed up royally. David dropped the ball a lot. But David was after God's own heart. Amen? I love what God can do with misfits. The best way to describe Urban Outreach Phoenix, we are a bunch of misfits who God gave a second chance to. We are difficult to deal with, but we're a force to be reckoned with for the kingdom. At the end of the night, when they go downtown to cast, they get in a circle now, and they begin to sing the song Amazing Grace. Do you know how powerful it is? When you begin to see people struggling, stop caring about their problems, stop caring about their situation, stop caring about the condition of their life, and they just begin to do this in the middle of the street with everybody. Now, I'm tone deaf as they get, but I'll sing my soul out to that. They just begin to sing, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And they want to pray for you. You want to talk about getting convicted. Like, my God, you're more worried about our soul than your circumstance. You can complain. We can be about this. Now, I'm not saying like that's every week. But I'm saying when we usher in the presence of the Lord, God does miraculous things in the atmosphere. God will do miraculous things to those who believe. Miracle signs and wonders. They follow those who believe. So maybe... We're not believing the whole word of God. We got to quit getting appetizers and stopping. I want the full entree. How many people go into a restaurant? You know, I'll, we'll take you to somewhere like what, what's it called Cap Capital Grill. That's a good one, ain't it? Say, hey, order whatever you want. <laughs> get the best or, or Dominic steak. Like, get the very best. And you go in there and says, well, you know what? I'll take a salad. That's it. That's all I want for the day. People are going to look at you like, what are you doing? I'm trying to give you the best. Why are we settling? As a whole, I can't stand when people, it, it, it irks my spirit. When they talk about the church and don't include themselves. I don't do that. I'm part of the body of Christ. So if I know there's brothers and sisters struggling over here, guess what? I'm part of that struggle. But what am I going to do about it? Are we going to hold them accountable? Are we going to step up? Are we going to encourage them? Well, this church is this. This church is that. This church is this. This. Okay, well, what are you doing to be a part of that? These are things that get brought up all the time. I love our Urban Outreach family. I can't, I, I can't brag on them enough, but it's about the kingdom. If you step foot in that house, you can ask anybody that walks in there, what do they talk about? What do they preach about? What is it about with Urban Outreach? I can ask James now, James, what is Urban Outreach about? That's it. And that's at any time. It's always about the kingdom. It's always going to be about the kingdom. Why? Because Jesus preached, come on, the kingdom. Jesus preached the gospel of the Come on, say it with some confidence. Come on, the kingdom. We need to preach the kingdom. Everything it's going to take for the kingdom. Anytime we go speak somewhere, it's about the kingdom. It's never going to be about us. Last time I was here, I shared with Pastor Keith. I said, you're about to expand. I don't know when, how, or what's going to happen, but you're about to expand. Guess what's happened? Y'all have expanded. Now, y'all, there's Verado Campus. How amazing is that? Y'all should be excited about that. Say, God, thank you. There's more, there, there's more chairs here. There's more opportunities. There's lost souls out there. God, how can you use me as a vessel for your kingdom? God, how can you use me to, to help fill your house? The house of God should be filled. And people should be thirsty to come in here. It should bother people to not be in here. Buckeyes, I think it's the fastest growing city in Arizona. What's that mean? The harvest is coming for you. You ain't got to go after it. It's coming to you. You can't miss. The only time we miss the harvest, the only time we miss the opportunities is if we don't go and we don't do. 
How did we start growing as Urban Outreach? It wasn't because we said these prophetic things, all these profound. No, we prayed. Yeah. What else we do? We preached even if there was one person, there was 20, it didn't matter. God spoke very clearly to me and, my, me and my wife. Take care of the ones I give you and I will send you everyone. Take care of the ones I put in front of you and I will send the increase. It's not about us. We're not doing nothing. We're just being obedient. We're just obeying what God's called us to do. I'm going to send you some difficult people. <laughs> Guess what? We have some difficult people. Why? Because people are difficult. Everybody in this room is difficult in some area of your life. Amen. Whether you want to be right, whether <laughs> it's pride, whether you got all the answers, I don't know. Whether you struggle with pornography, sexual sin, temptation, I don't know what it is. I'm not you. I'll tell you what, I, I, I'll be transparent. One of my biggest struggles is my kids. My, my kids teach me day in, day out, the littles, sister sometimes, but really the littles, they teach me how selfish I am. Am I going to fall into sin? Am I knowingly willfully going to lash out at them out of the flesh. Guess what that's called? Anybody know? It's called knowingly sinning because I lashed out when I should have expressed self-control, which it talks about in Galatians chapter 5. I fell into the flesh. That means I got out of relationship. I got out of an alignment. Anybody drove a car that was out of alignment? <laughs> it, don't, it don't go as good, does it? It doesn't. The same thing with our walk with the Lord. We get out of alignment. It don't go as good. But when I begin to display more grace and mercy, God begins to show that. He begins to reveal that. Well, now you're not getting bent out of shape. You're not getting this and this and this. Look where you've grown. My wife and Carrie, on the other hand, kids can be... Ten shades of chaos. It's okay. They're kids. I'm over here like blood pressure up here. I'm purple. About to stroke out. I'm like, ah. Oh. Like, why are you getting upset for it? What do you mean? They're awesome. Why? Because God knew I was going to need a woman like that in my life. He knew I was going to need a wife. He knew I was going to need a Proverbs 31. God knew I didn't need a Jezebel. He knew I needed a Proverbs. See, a lot of things going on in the church. Well, they're in the church, so they must be women of God. How many people know that's a lie from the pits of hell? I'll say it. Why? Because we say what people don't say, we do what people don't do, and we live how people don't live. God knew I needed a Proverbs, not a Jezebel. And we're settling for Jezebels. This is for the men, the women. Stop settling for someone who's treating you like a girlfriend and not a wife. If anything is less than top notch, if you are settling, then you're limiting God. That was a personal conviction I got, but I believe that's for every last individual, anybody who ever wants to get married. What, what was I doing? I was surrendering to God, but I wasn't resisting the devil. And we're going to get in that scripture here shortly. Why? Because we give the devil more time than he's allowed. As once we acknowledge that there's areas of our lives that the enemy's had, then we need to confront it, submit to God, resist, call on the elders of the church, let's pray, let's remove it, let's bind it, let's cast it out, let's keep pressing forward Amen. for the prize. Let's keep pressing forward. It's hard. It's challenging. When we're, when we're following Jesus with everything in us, it gets hard. It gets ugly, and it's challenging. I share this with our, with, with our people with Urban Outreach, and I share this everywhere I go, and I'm sure Pastor Keith has shared this. If it was easy, everybody would do it. There's a reason it says many are called, but few are chosen. God's called many. But few are chosen to step into that. 
If you're in this house, you're at very least called. But are you going to make that decision to be chosen? We got to step into that role. Are you called to be a leader? We got to be a servant first. I want pastors, well, I'm going to get up there and preach. Every... You can't even serve. What makes you think you're going to preach? Sit down. Listen to the word of God. And listen to what the word of God speaks of. One of the things I found out just from doing ministry for several years now is willful sinning. And then we'll compromise our sin and justify it. Anybody ever justified a sin? Am I the only one? All right, we got a couple people. All right, Mitch. So we got a few people. By the end of service, I'm expecting every hand to be up <laughs> because we got to get in a place of repentance. Let me ask you, if anybody's ever did this. Anybody ever got drunk? Yeah. Raise your hand. All right, there we go. More hands went up. Anybody ever got high? Yeah. Come on, there's some more hands up. Anybody ever stole? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Anybody ever damaged your body internally? Yeah. Guess what that's, and you knew what it was was wrong? Guess what that is called? Willful sinning. I'm not here to condemn people. We're, we're here to acknowledge something and get it knocked out the park so we, we don't have to go back to that life. See, we were dead in our sins, right? We accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. We've been baptized. Why do we keep going back to the dead and holding on to it and dragging it with us? So we're going to start off in Romans 6, verse 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? It's one of my favorite cop-outs I've heard from people. God's grace is sufficient. You have no idea what that context means. You better quit. And I'll, I'll smile and I'll laugh at them. Because they take it for their own good. So they justify their sin. Well, God's grace is sufficient. Yeah, but you're still knowingly, willfully doing these things. Why are we not working on removing these things? It's too hard. Right now, I'm going, I started a diet, all right? Anybody know what Lamar's Donuts are? Them things are good. Them things are real good. I am struggling. But I know if I get off course, I'm not going to eat just one. I'm going to fall in this thing called gluttony because I'm going to put myself in a food coma. <laughs> hey, look, I'm, hey, I'm just being transparent. It says, go on sinning on that. My grace may increase. By no means. We are those who had died to sin. Everybody say died. Okay, everybody. How can we live in it any longer? Why do we want to live in the dead when God says you are alive in Christ? If we're alive in Christ, then why are we living a dead life? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death, not ours? So stop picking up those dead bones. Stop digging up that grave. Say, well, no, I just got to get a little more of this pain. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Everybody say new life. New life. We have a new life in Christ. We. You accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior into your heart? Lord over your life? You've been baptized, you died, you resurrected, dead in Christ, alive in Christ. Stop picking up that dead weight. Anybody ever lifted up dead body weight? Come on, anybody ever lifted up dead body weight? How much harder is it to lift up dead body weight than when someone jumps up? So why are we lifting up the dead body weight? 
talking about, oh, I'm getting worn out. Well, of course you are. You're holding on to things that you're not supposed to hold on to. God said that was dead to you. You are a new creation. You are alive in Christ. So if we're alive in Christ, then why not be the light? Why not go take it back? The only way I'm going back, I'm going back to the enemy's camp. Why? Because I've been equipped. I've been encouraged. I've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to go back to the enemy's camp and say, how dare you try to scare me? We got more people that are scared of the devil than they are of the Lord. That's a problem. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We will run from the devil, yet we will run from the devil even though we carry the Holy Ghost. What is wrong with this picture? It's like this. All right, I want y'all to get a visualization here, all right? You ready? Picture somebody with no arms, no legs, and you give them a sword. I'm not talking about the Word of God sword. I'm talking about an actual sword. And you tell them, you're going to slay me with this sword. What's that going to look like? Are you really going to be that fearful? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm scared to death that they're going to do that. That's the same thing we do with the devil. Why? He comes against our family. He comes against our marriage. He comes against our finances. He comes against the places that we put above God. You ever realize he don't come at you in the places you're strong at. He comes at you in your weakness because he's a punk. That's what it is. He's a chump. So where you're weak at, he's going to keep going after it. He's going to keep going after that area because he knows he got you. Until God I surrender to you, devil. You have no authority over my life. You are done having the power and authority of my life in this area. We need to have that fear of the Lord, church. I'm not talking about scared to take it to the Father. I'm talking about the one who is the author and finisher of our, of our faith. The author and finisher of our, of our life, our salvation. Whether we're going to make it to heaven or not, I'd be terrified. I am fearful of him. But I know I'm wonderfully made through him. I know this. Yes, I have a fear of the Lord, but I know I can go to him at any time. I know that I carry, I, I carry the Holy Ghost with me. I know everywhere I go, he's coming with me. I know he's going to go before me. Why? Because I do what the word of God says. I do my very, very best. I give him everything I have. The very least we can do is give God our very best. Too many times we give him, I don't know, what they got crystals out here or White Castle? But I don't know what they got out here. So, all right, picture this. Someone walks up and offers you a, 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 a Wagyu tomahawk steak. All right, and you got access to all that. And you walk over and hand him a, a McDouble. Why is it that we treat God like that? Why? That's how we treat our sins. Our sins have greater impact than our deliverance, our freedom. We'll convince ourselves that. Well, I'm, I just can't get through this right now. I'm too weak for this. Where is God in this situation? If we knowingly live in sin, willfully living in sin, then we need to take it to the altar. We need to take it to the Father in heaven. The most sacred place in the house of God is right here. This thing should be full every service. Hey, God, I struggled with this this week, this this week, this on the way to church, this actually out in the parking lot of the church. This when I walked into the church. God, I, gotta, I, I need to be set free. Yeah. We're going to move it down to Hebrews. How many people like the book of Hebrews? Yeah. I love it. We're going to Hebrews uh, chapter 10. It says, Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning, after we have received knowledge of the truth. See, there's a difference in sinning and not knowing it's a sin and sinning and knowing it's a sin. 
See, early in my walk with Christ, I didn't know anything was wrong. Brother Ricky will testify to that. And then when I had the knowledge of truth, where's the knowledge of truth? The Word of God. I had that knowledge of truth revealed to me. Then I started getting convicted living in sin. I began to do things I kept doing before. Now all of a sudden, I start feeling bad. Why am I feeling this type of way? And I would walk in this gym, and he would laugh hysterically at me. Him and a guy named uh, Pastor Kev, they would laugh hysterically at me. And I'm over here having a weep fest. I'm just in sorrow. Why? Because I know what I was doing was wrong. It's one thing to have the knowledge of truth and another to not have it. Why do we read the word? Why do we need to come into church? Why do we need people and other believers and followers of Jesus Christ, disciples of Christ, to be in our lives? Why? So we can be inspired by the word of God. Well, I ain't been reading the word very much. Why not? Let's do this together. Let's just sit down some time. Let's get into the word. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Our faith will be increased when we read the word of God, when we hear the word of God. When we read it, we're hearing it. Amen? It says, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover, cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. We knowingly live in sin and we don't repent for our sins. It's not what I say, it's what God's word says. It's God's judgment, the raging fire that will come on his enemies. That's what he thinks about the sins. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testament of two or three witnesses. I'm so grateful <laughs> that we have a new covenant because it ain't very hard, Pastor. This could be for you too to get two or three people upset at you. Let me just let me get you to disagree with me. Next thing you know, stone him. <laughs> it's like, oh no. How many people know that's the kind of world we live in? All right, maybe you're not seeing and the same things I am. We just had the Roe vs. Wade overturn, and you would have thought this world completely shut down. I see more hatred displayed in a matter of one day than I have in the last six months. God has a way of revealing people's motives and hearts. goes on to say, just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercies to us. Knowingly living in sin, once we've had the knowledge of truth, is like taking God and slapping Him in the face. It's doing this, God, what you... Jesus, what you did on that cross, it wasn't enough. You need to get back up there. Every time we knowingly sin, we're saying get back up on that cross because what you did wasn't enough. But see, we don't want to talk about these things in church because it makes us uncomfortable. They're not popular topics. They're not this and that. It's not about that. I want the whole word of God. I want it to burn me up inside it like, you know what? I am guilty of that. I am guilty of that. Father, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. I repent. I repent. It's a horrible place to be. But see, when we look at it from that perspective, look at it from that perspective. I know what I'm doing is wrong. Yes, I, I know my pride is getting to me too much. Jesus, the cross that you went to, my pride's bigger than that cross. Even though you said it is finished. It is finished. But not my pride. Not my integrity. Not my, 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 my. I love what you said, on point, on purpose. There's a purpose for our lives. It's not to live in slavery to sin. It's not to, it's not to live willfully in sin. 
We're to be set free. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is... Come on, say it like you mean it. Freedom. Freedom. Come on, there it is. One more time, there is... Freedom. Come on. There's freedom. There's freedom. He cleansed us with the blood. Washed us white as snow. And we're saying, let me hold on to that scarlet some more. You know why, God? You could take all these sins away from me. You could take all these sins. But this one right here, I need to hold on to. I need to keep this one. Because if I let go of this one, I'm going to change even more. I'm going to change even more. It's because our mind hasn't been completely transformed. Or we would know if we let go of that, God has something better for us. That God's setting us up for a blessing. We just have to seek his face. We need to be more concerned with seeking his face and his righteousness than his blessings, than his promotions. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. He will add everything. Not us, not pastor, not the Arizona district, not the United States, not the government, not the stimulus. Check. No, he, God, he will send it. And the last scripture he gave me, I told you we was going to talk about this. And this is the one that I, I see so much. There are people I will not pray for. Everybody's like, why would you not pray for them? Why would you not cast those devils out? Because there's going to be seven more come after them, and they're not equipped to handle it. They say, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If someone ain't willing to get off the streets, I'm not going to cast those devils off of them because they're not going to be in a place of discipleship to where they can lay the hands on them when they began to manifest. Anybody ever seen a real demon manifest? Not somebody just yell or cuss at you or scream at you. I'm talking about a real demon manifestation. Anybody ever seen one? Because if you've seen one, then you're going to understand why I said what I said. We got a lot of people that submit to God, but they don't resist the devil. We submit to God. God, I surrender to you. But devil, here, you can keep me in bondage. God, I surrender to you. Why am I still struggling with this? Because you haven't resisted the devil. Because you have the knowledge of truth, but you're still living the lie. We can't live from a false aspect of life and expect to walk in freedom. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. This is James chapter 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. And then there's another part. Resist the devil. Everybody say resist. I know we know the scripture. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We got a lot of submission but no resisting. I was joking around with my, my health coach. I'm about to play this, uh, show a couple pictures here in a second. But uh, I was asking him, I said, uh, do, do I get a cheat day? Come on, anybody ever been on a diet and asked for a cheat day? I played football all these years. Yes. Hey, I know we get a cheat day. He goes, would you cheat on your wife? I said, well, that did not go as planned. <laughs> but see, I, I need to resist the temptations of the enemy who wants me to fall in so God don't continue to, pro to progress because faith without works is dead. I, there's an action. There's an application we have to do. Yes, we surrendered. But now we got to resist. I'm going to ask you all three questions. Can we go ahead and start getting these pictures up here, please? Three questions. Are we knowing, are we knowingly living in sin? What area of your life, if that is you, do you knowingly live in sin? If you have that, when we do an altar call, we're going to need this up at the altar. It's not about a show. This is about you getting set free. Two, have we intentionally resisted the devil because of a place of comfort? I don't want to get rid of that because 
It's going to make it uneasy and a little bit of challenge for me. Too many times we want to go from A to B, but we want to hit C, D, X, Y, L, Q before we get to B. Now, let's just go from point A to point B. What's that way? Walking with the Lord. Three, have we fully committed ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ? The days of half in, half out are gone. Half in, half out has gone. I don't want a Walmart back to school sale. All right, I don't want this 50% off. I want the fullness of God. I can't give him just half. I'm done with these. Our heart needs to be in a place of repentance. Our minds need to serve the living God. We need to be in alignment. We need to confront these things. And instead of worrying about, are we going to be judged? Pastor, are you going to judge me if I share this with you? No. That's why I'm here for, to shepherd. No, we want to help get you plugged in. We want to disciple you. We want to raise you up. We want to help you get past this aspect. But pride will tell you that you can't do that. Arrogance. Frustration. Insecurities will convince you that you cannot do that. But we're alive in Christ. Amen. Got three pictures we're going to show. I shared these with Pastor. I was, I was talking a little bit before service about these. These are so impactful. We'll start with this one right here. So this is Jason. Jason was the first person we met on the old building. We was at at 59th in Glendale. And Jason, he, he just happened to be homeless that day. He was only homeless for like a week at that point. Struggling. Struggling. I said, hey, brother, you want to help us move a couple things? Yeah, yeah. We met Jason right where he was at. We didn't look at him because he was high. We didn't look at him differently because of X, Y, Z. Nah, we're going to love you like Christ loved the church. You know what? We're going to treat you like you're not even high or nothing. We're just going to love you right where you're at. We are going to love you like you ain't never felt love before. We got done offloading the trailer, and he looks at me. And the Holy Spirit just got me. He just hit me hard. He goes, ask that man if he's ever received me. I said, Jason, you ever accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? He went, no. And then he just, he looked at me and froze up. I said, Lord, I need words of knowledge. Next thing you know, he started giving me very specifics to the age where he stopped going to church with his grandmother when he was a kid. To the first person that really hurt him in his life that he remembers To the point he steered away from the Lord completely, weeping. Weeping because the presence of God was there and God was so evident at that point in his life he couldn't deny it if he tried to. Man started weeping and ended up giving his life to the Lord. Six months later, he's still homeless, comes to one of the services, gets baptized. After six months, did we give up on, well, you didn't get baptized now. No, no, no. I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you smell. I don't like, no. We're going to meet you right where you're at. I don't care what your present circumstance is. I don't care what your present condition is. Because where you're at presently isn't your destination. It's not where God's going to keep you. This is where he sent us in your life to meet you and let you know that the God of Abraham and Jacob is alive today and active and well. Amen. Got a phone call about a month ago. We've been trying to get him off the streets for over a year. Anybody ever ministered to someone and felt like you got absolutely nowhere? Come on. And you're like, why do I keep going after this one? Why? Like, why won't you just get it? You ever had that, Pastor Keith? Like, just let it sink through your head. Don't you see? It's this. Got a call. He remembered mine and Eugene's number. No paper, no nothing. His AA sponsor called me up and said, hey, Jason wants to talk to his pastor. And he said, you're his pastor. I said, you got to be kidding me. This is going on. I said, this is incredible. 
Jason's in a recovery program, a discipleship program now. Is that amazing or what? Next one. This was last weekend. Anybody know where Safford is? I know you do. <laughs> I love Pastor Keith. I do. So this is Hector. When we first found Hector. Oh, okay. God bless you, Zach. So, so Hector, anybody ever seen like one of the big old gasoline tanks that gets transported? Well, they had one for milk. And Hector was underneath one of those. And Pastor Jeremy is the guy with the long beard to the right, or yeah, to the right of him. Never did an outreach, never went outside the walls, right? He, he, he says, I'm not wired like this. This gets me very uncomfortable. What if they yell? What if they cuss at me? I don't know. They could stab me or shoot me. You'll have that. You'll be all right, I promise. That's our mentality. Like, all right, we've been shot at a few times, had some machetes pulled on us. I'm like, it's, you'll get over it. Just keep showing up. They're like, why is that normal to you? That's not a normal thing. It's okay. You're going to hell, and you're wondering why people are chaotic. So, Hector had a huge gash all over his head, scabs all over his face. He got jumped, they beat him, they robbed him. He had, uh, he had flies, and he had other insects chewing at his scabs. That was on Saturday. This, he showed up to church on Sunday. Amen. We called the ambulance. They went and got him treated. The ambulance dropped him back off to where he was at. The very next morning, I said, hey, anybody been to the park or this? And Jeremy was like, no. I said, well, let's send somebody there. The park was right around the corner. They picked up him and another gentleman that day. We got him into a recovery program here in Phoenix uh, on Wednesday. Next one. This is the last one. That's my buddy. That is my buddy. Marcus is my buddy. That's my little friend. And you see them clapping and getting excited because Marcus is a complete miracle walking kid. Amen. Guess what? He's a youth. He's only been around for a couple months now. And his doctors have seen more transformation in a couple months and they've tried to work with him for over 50 or 12 years. Why? Because he got hit with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Marcus is incredible. That man on Thursdays, when we go out, he is running back and forth at the altar, jumping and shouting and praising Jesus. Yes. Not because of what Jesus did in his life. Yes. And he's learning to have that relationship with Jesus. Amen. We went from having 55 youth to over 130 youth and kids coming in weekly. Marcus is one of those. He was on 20-plus medications. 20-plus medications. Anybody know what it's like to be on 20-plus medications? Most I've ever been on was 14. All right, 14 was the most. I'm down to a couple now. But hopefully with this diet, I'll be off all of them. Praise the Lord. He walks in. They had an unexpected uh, uh, doctor's appointment they didn't know about. Didn't know about it. Goes to his appointment. He, he starts talking to his doctor. He didn't talk about his problems. He didn't talk about nothing like that. He goes, yeah, doctor, I got, um, I got saved. I accepted Jesus in my heart. I got baptized. He goes, I'm feeling great, better than I've ever had. Take a wild guess what the doctor said. He removed all of his medications Amen. like that. Anybody ever seen someone come off medications before? It is not a pretty sight. He came off 22, and he's still shouting and jumping and rejoicing for what God did in his life. Amen. Guess what? You don't see him up there with suits and ties, do you? He's not a multi-billionaire. No, he's just somebody that said yes to Jesus. Yes. Jesus got a hold of him and transformed him. Amen. Now he wants to learn the word of God. He's starting to learn praise and worship songs. He's learning these things. And everybody who is connected with Urban Outreach is part of that. 
I tell people, it's about the kingdom. Pastor, you ever sowed into us? Guess what? You are part of that. You are part of this. This house is part of that. You prayed for him? Guess what? You were part of that. You prayed for us? You're part of those victories. You are part of that. Stop giving the devil so much authority. Resist and be set free. God did not call us to willfully live in sin. Everybody stand to your feet. God did not call us to willfully live in sin. He did not call us to willfully live in a struggle. He didn't call us to willfully be bounded up in slavery. But he called us to be set free and live in freedom. Guess what? This is a house of worship. This is a house of God. This is the place where things can be casted off. This is the place where we can be set free and delivered. Why? Because this is God's holy ground. Amen? So at the beginning of the service, I want to call them that. Where's the elders at? Pastor? The, the, the prayer team? I want the prayer, I want the prayer team up here specifically for this. All right. and, and, and this is why. All right. I asked everybody a question in here. I asked everybody a question. If you all had a need in your life, how many people in here raised your hand? Raise your hand. Oh, come on. Don't, don't keep your hands down now. <laughs> Honesty, pride, who cares? It's not about you. Guess what? Pastor's not going to be standing side by side to you when you go stand before him. Amen. If you have a need, yes. these are going to be questions I'm going to ask you to bring to the altar this morning. Oh. Don't make it about you. This ain't about a show. This is about you and him. Amen. If you have a need, come get prayer. Yeah. If you are struggling in a sin in your life, bring it to the altar. One of the things we teach so much, the altar, the altar, yeah. the altar. Yeah. Take it to the altar. It's not about you. It's about him. Because Marcus kept taking things to the altar, Marcus no longer has to be on 22 meds. Yeah. Because Jason kept showing up to the altar, yeah. Jason is in a recovery, a recovery program. Because Hector took it to the altar, Hector is now in a discipleship home. That's three. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of testimonies. And you can be the very next one. I was struggling with this. I was struggling with this. I was struggling with this. But I showed up on a Sunday. I came up to the altar, and God set me free of this. But we can't hold on to that. We got to let it go at the altar. Pastor, we got, some, we got some worship music we can praise, we can play. So I'm going to ask everybody this one more time. And if this is you... I want you to come up to the altar at the count of three. If you have a need, if there is a, a, a sin that you are struggling with, you're in battleship with, or you want God to take you to a deeper level, and you don't know how, if that is you in any of those three areas, I want you to come up here, and I pray promise you God will speak to you. I can't promise a lot of things, but when we take things to his throne room, God tends to move. Amen? If that is you on any, who cares what the person next to you? It's not about them. This is about you and God. This is about you getting set free. Amen? If that is you, don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Be encouraged.
people come. Won't you come and rest with me today? Let my people come. Yeah. This is my desire. This is my desire. To fill you with my whole the holy of holies. Come on in. Come on in. Take a seat. I have set the place for light it's on the valley just to be with you. Let my people Those who are called by my name, come, let my people come. Won't you come, won't you come, won't you come, and let my people come. Torn the veil. I have torn the veil into just to be with you. I have torn the veil. I have torn the veil into just to be with you. Oh, I've torn the veil. Hold on. We are not finished. Everybody left. If you see somebody out in the lobby, tell them we needed to take a love offering. So if you, if you see anybody out there, tell them they can give in the black box and make it to Zippy Dirks. Also, if you want to go online, you can give online and, and same thing that's on there today. We're going to give a generous love gift from the church regardless. But anybody that can hear me, I would appreciate y'all giving a love gift today to this ministry. God bless you. Let's sing them out, man. Let's do it one more time. Yeah, let my people. Let